We say to you, fear Allah. Do not oppress the Muslims. We will stand for Islam. We will stand for the Sharia. We will stand for our Muslim brothers, whether you hate it or whether you like it. Nare Takbir! Allah Akbar! Nare Takbir! My name is Abu Rumaysa and uh, I'm 29 years old. Um, I converted to Islam around 10 years ago and um, I've been engaged in activities that are, you know, calling for the implementation of the Sharia. You know, I've had the opportunity to, you know, be in the company of people like Anjum Chowdhury and study under him. And, you know, that has led me to an understanding of how beautiful Islam and the Sharia is and what Islam can offer. When I converted to Islam, it was post 9-11. So for me, um, Islam was like the talking point in, 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 in the media. Um, I'm sure like many uh, British people who are Christian or atheist, uh, they would get offended when someone tells them that, you know, the, the life they are leading will lead to hellfire. But if you just, you know, reflect for a bit and think, look, ultimately, let's, you know, swallow a bit of pride and adopt a, a path which is, which is better for us. When the is Islamic State is established, you know, um, there will be a, a foreign policy and if there is no treaty with this country, then there will be, you know, a policy of warfare. On the 27th of September, Abu Ramesa fled the UK after being released on conditional bail. He failed to comply with the conditions of his release and boarded a bus to Paris with his wife and children and is now believed to have joined the Islamic State in Syria. Along with eight other suspects, Abu Ramesa was arrested in a series of dawn raids carried out by UK anti-terror police on suspicion of supporting the banned terrorist organisation al Mahajarun. Over the last year and a half, Vice News has interviewed Abu Ramesa about his campaign to impose Sharia law in the UK, as well as his views on Britain's foreign policy. Radical Islamist preacher Anjum Chowdhury was one of the nine suspects arrested on the same day as Abu Ramesa. While still on conditional bail, we went to meet Anjum to find out more about Abu Ramesa's departure to join the Islamic State. Can you tell me about the recent raid where both yourself and Abu Ramesa were arrested? Yeah, as you know, the government had a, a vote in Parliament on the 26th of September this year where they uh, voted to bomb Muslims and murder them in Iraq and Syria and they raided us the day before. They said uh, to our lawyer that they thought that we were planning some kind of attack, that we had declared that there was no covenant of security. Obviously, it was a complete lie. And has your passport been taken? Yeah, they took my passport, yeah. They took my driving licence. They took about 80 bags of items as part of their uh, so-called bail conditions. Were well, the bail conditions the same for Abu Ramesa? Uh, well, I, I assume so. Obviously, I didn't see his, uh, his particular warrant and his uh, conditions, but I assume they were exactly the same. The police are saying that he's in Syria. It wouldn't surprise me. But uh, this is why I understand that he left. He, he was asked to hand in his passport. I think uh, from what the police are saying, he took his passport and he went abroad with his family. You're talking about a region now which is bigger than Britain. All of the vices like uh, you know, alcohol, drugs, uh, pornography, prostitution, gambling, etc. are completely eradicated. They provide the basic needs for the people in terms of food, clothing and shelter, things like water, gas, electricity, etc. free of charge. And of course you have Islamic uh, education and all of the other things which the Islamic State is obliged to provide. So, you know, it's the Khilafah system. It's what we've been struggling for for the last 20 years, at least, you know, some of us in this country. So I think that, uh, you know, it, it is a dream of every Muslim to live under the Sharia and to bring up his children by the Sharia. Don't you think it's a bit weird that he's taken his children to, well, effectively a war zone? Well, in fact, well, a war no, zone. No, no, his thing is not the whole, the whole country is in a war zone. You see, this is what people misunderstand. It's not a guerrilla warfare. It's not like people are on the mountains of, uh, I don't know, uh, Tora Bora or somewhere where they're being bombed. You know, it's very secure and very safe for the people. I think it's more safe than this country indeed. The route he's taken as far as I understand is via Paris. Is that like a common route? I, I don't know about the route. You can't ask, I, I can't answer that question. Let's stop talking about the preachers of hate. Let's stop talking about Anjum Chowdhury as being the problem. He's not the problem. The real preachers of hate are David Cameron. The real preachers of hate and violence are you know, those uh, you know, MPs in Parliament who are allowing soldiers to fire bullets of extremism at innocent men, women and children in, in Afghanistan. What is it? Motors? It's Islam. Islam. Hey. Islam. Over here is um, a small business that I ran, uh, a bouncy castle high business. So um, 
Initially, this, um, this den was used for uh, storing all this material. But the more we got more involved in our campaigns, we realised that you know, uh, space was needed for our, our materials. I'd like my, um, my family to embrace Islam. You know, uh, when you read the description of Hellfire uh, and the Day of Judgment, you know, it's something that is, is very, very tough. And to know that someone that has uh, grown up with you for many years is going to go down that path as well if they don't change, of course, that is something that hurts. But, uh, you, know, I can only, you know, you can only try your best. So how come you yourself didn't go? Well, I don't have a passport, do I? Well, about before the trial, well, before you before I have had a passport, passport, what I basically said, which is a lot of people said, is that when I, when I go, if and when I go, I'll go openly publicly, and I'll make, that, I'll make sure that, that it's clear that, you know, this kind of action, just to go there, to live there with your family, you know, is not actually, you know, a criminal offence. They need to make that clear, so I, because I think many Muslims will want to go there. Now, there's no doubt people may make mistakes. You know, there may be some misapplication of Sharia here or there, but that does not negate the fact that it is an Islamic State and they're implementing the Sharia, which they need to, to be classified as an Islamic State. So do you believe Abu Rumaysa would have gone to Syria to live or to fight? I think he would have gone there to live, quite frankly. I mean, you know, I can't postulate because, you know, I'm not with him, so I can't say anything about his own situation, you know. I didn't even know he was there, quite frankly. All I knew was that he didn't turn up, uh, you know, to the court the other day when we were reviewing the bail conditions. What if you were to find out he wanted to come back? Well, if he wants to come back, it's entirely up to him, isn't it? I don't know what his situation is. I mean, you know, what if we, what if we found out that he wanted to go to Indonesia? What if we found out, you know, that he's uh, ended up being nominated as the Khalifa? I mean, you know, you could say many things. But the point is, he's left Britain. We assume he's living under the Islamic State. It's what he wanted to do. But I think definitely he wanted to go to the Islamic State and he wanted to live there and bring up his children there, you know, witness the Sharia. He said that to most of the media. He even said he was willing to give up his citizenship. So, you know, it's no surprise really that he's ended up there. So we believe that whenever the Sharia is established, the pure Islamic State, maybe in Iraq or Syria, that one day that, you know, the, the, the leader will wage jihad and you know, annex uh, Britain into the Islamic State. Uh, we're not going to forget Europe, we're not going to forget Britain. The armies will be sent here to conquer the, these, these lands.